I'm Aki Martinson, and I made this sink cabinet for my laundry room. Stick around and find out how. I make CAD models for absolutely everything. I use these tools a little too often, if I'm honest, but there's a class of mistakes it won't let you make, and this project got just complicated enough for that to matter. Because the plumbing and electrical conduit mostly runs on rather than in the laundry room walls, this little notch in the base is really important. Off camera I did the plumbing for the supply lines and the drainage pipe. They run along the baseboard, which some people might object to, but that's kind of the theme of this room anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and own it. It's going to be a little bit cleaner, though, when it gets clamped to a piece of wood that's part of the back of the cabinet. More on that later. For this project, I got myself two new tools, a track saw, this one's by Makita, and a Craig jig. So I'm catching a ride on two YouTube woodworker bandwagons at once. First, I have to cut the main pieces of the cabinet out of one sheet of 18mm Baltic birch plywood. I need two sides, a bottom, two doors, the top front and top rear edge, and six 4-inch wide pieces for the plinth. I made the back out of 6mm plywood. As with many cabinet and furniture designs, the back is only to prevent racking, so it doesn't need to be as thick. A great thing about these track saws is that they're designed to be plunged into the workpiece, which is ideal for cutting out an opening like this one. I'm saving the plug. My plan is to attach it to the wall and secure the pipes to it. This piece is the same width as the bottom. I'm using the table saw here to cut narrow strips for the top front and top rear. I'm going to assemble the thicker parts of the cabinet with pocket holes, but the back is going to glue into a rabbit I'm cutting for it all around the perimeter of the cabinet. That means the two sides, the bottom, and the top rear piece will all be rabbited on one edge. I don't have a dado stack, so I'm going to make the rabbit by just taking two or three cuts with the usual blade. Since I have to get right up to the edge of the piece, I'm making a sacrificial plywood fence that I can run the blade against. I need some 4 inch wide pieces to make the plinth or toe kick face that the cabinet will sit on. This piece will become the two doors. I'm using the bottom plus two thicknesses to mark out the total width. Then I'll cut it down the middle and run both pieces on the table saw with the fence fixed so I can be sure they're equal width. Now I need to make an entrance for the plumbing in the bottom of the cabinet. Off camera I made some plunge cuts with the track saw to get this started. This piece is really too big for my drill press, so I'll use this corded handheld drill. There are a few voids and defects in this plywood that I'm fixing with wood filler. At this point, there's a whole lot of sanding I'm going to skip over very quickly. Before assembly, I went through a range of grits from 80 to 220 for all the parts I've made. There's going to be more sanding after assembly, of course, but particularly for inside corners, it's a lot easier to do it now. Finally, I can start assembly using the Craig jig to make pocket holes. I'm not going to plug any of these holes, I'm just going to cleverly put them in unseen places. I'm starting with the flint. There's only two joints in the assembly where I'm using pocket holes on an inside corner, at the two front corners of the flint. To get this really square, it's not good enough to rely on the Craig corner clamps. So I'm working out a way to clamp it using bench dogs and the workbench's tail vise. I'll 
I'll take it. Now to assemble the case itself. I need pocket holes in the top front, top rear, and bottom panel. Now what do we have here? To apply clamping pressure to the back I used a combination of long clamps across the bottom and short clamps across the top. Then to get this cabinet square I also needed to apply some pressure across the diagonal, for which I'm using those red and black exercise bands, tensioned by a mahogany log inserted at the top here. It was the only thing I had to hand that was the right size and shape. After letting the glue dry, it's time to bring the cabinet to the laundry room for the next step. Did I make the classic mistake of building something too big to fit through the workshop door? I did not. Did I plan it that way? Let's say yes. For the countertop, I'm going to use an IKEA product named Gurtin, which is an affordably priced solid slab of beech wood. Some of the wood countertops they sell aren't solid, by the way, so do your research. It happens that this is exactly the width I need already, so I only need to make one cut. Now to make the cutout for the sink itself. I'm drilling it in four places to get nice radiused corners, which I'll connect using plunge cuts. And now, of course, more sanding. Yikes. That left the kind of dent that you can't sand out. But this does give me the opportunity to try an old timer trick. Take a wet paper towel, apply heat with an iron. Like it never happened. I've mentioned before that I don't like polyurethane, but since I keep working on things that are going to get wet, I keep using it. This time I am switching to a wipe-on poly though, maybe I'll like it better. After applying two coats of the poly, I sanded the entire thing with 400 grit sandpaper, inside and out, top and bottom, and all edges.
Then I applied the final finish coat. For the countertop, I'm using Danish oil instead of polyurethane. I like the matte finish, and it's simple to reapply it to the countertop later if I need to. And now for assembly and installation. Here's the cabinet upside down in the laundry room. I'm using small angle brackets to secure it to the plinth. quite a gap here. Either the floor is not level or the wall is not plumb. In fact, the problem is the floor, not the wall. So I'm going to shim the base and screw the back of the cabinet into the wall. This is an exterior wall, which in suburban South Florida means concrete block with furring strips and drywall. I'm going to screw into those furring strips. Remember the plug I cut out from the back? I finished it the same way as the rest of the cabinet, and now I'm going to use it to support the plumbing. I got the sink in the faucet from Amazon. I need to run a bead of caulk under the lip of the sink, and then, once it's set in place, another bead of caulk around the edge. I made a few spacer bars out of the same plywood to get everything lined up. Nothing left now but to hang the doors. Not so fast. That's better. And that's another bit of chaos. Pushed back. Hope you liked it.